gifts are token of love and affection. And what better way to celebrate Valentine's Day than gifting that special loved one a box of handmade chocolatey indulgence. So here is my foodie twist for this occasion, chocolate covered strawberries. I have about 12 strawberries over here that are very very firm and I've washed them thoroughly and make sure you dry them on a cloth completely and there should be no moisture and they should be at room temperature. I have some roughly chopped chocolate slabs here, the dark compound, the milk compound and the white one. Chop them up in a deep glass so that it's easier to dip the strawberries in and also make sure they are microwavable and now into the microwave for about 30 to 40 seconds. All the three chocolate compounds have melted. They took about 50 seconds to melt. And if you feel there are a few lumps, you can just whisk it a little bit. I'm going to take a piping bag and fill it up with a little bit of this white chocolate. About two spoons. and this one is ready. Take another one and fill it up with the dark one. Just twist the piping bag and keep this aside. I have some things to decorate over here. Some colourful sprinkles, some roughly chopped roasted almonds, dark chocolate chips and some silver balls. Take your strawberry, get a wooden skewer like this or you can also use one of these little forks. Pierce this in. And now I'm going to dip this into the chocolate. Swirl it around. And now it's time to remove it. Next, lightly dip it into the sprinkles. Same way, I'm going to take another strawberry and dip it in the milk chocolate. Swirl it. This one, I'm going to garnish with the choco chips. Working with chocolate is a little tricky. So if you feel the chocolate is thickening, just microwave it for another 10 seconds. The third strawberry into the white chocolate. And this one, I'm going to coat with the almonds. This one is done too. In this way, you can roll the chocolate covered strawberries in any of the sprinkles that you like. Another one into the dark chocolate. Swirl it. And now straight onto the board. And now, I'm just going to make some zigzag lines onto the strawberry with the white chocolate. Put this in the freezer for 5 minutes to set. You can store these strawberries outside for 48 hours in a cool and dry place. You can even use fruits like guava, pear or even apple. But make sure you dip the entire slice into the chocolate. Enjoy these edible arrangements and wish you a very happy Valentine's Day. Bye-bye. Since it's the month of love, today's recipe is the perfect one to surprise your loved one with. It's red velvet cake with cream cheese frosting. For this recipe, you will need 195 grams of maida, that is around 1 and a half cups, 30 grams of corn flour, that is 2 tablespoons, and 2 teaspoons of cocoa powder, that is around 9 grams. We have to sift the ingredients together to remove any lumps. 
We have to sift our dry ingredients at least twice. Now let's move on to creaming our butter and sugar together. We need 60 grams of butter, that is around 1 fourth cup. 220 grams of sugar, that is 1 cup and 4 teaspoons. Now we have to cream these two together. Once your butter and sugar have mixed well together, we are going to add 60 ml of oil to it, that is around 1 fourth cup. Now, beat it well together. Once the mixture has become slightly pale in colour, that means it's done. Now moving on to our third step. Here I have 80 ml of yoghurt to which I have added 170 ml of water and it has become a total of 250 ml. To this, I am going to add 1 tablespoon of red food colouring. Give it a quick stir. To this, I am going to add 1 teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now we have to add our dry ingredients and our buttermilk mixture to our sugar and butter mixture. We are going to do it in three installments. Once your wet and dry ingredients have mixed well with each other, we are going to mix 1 teaspoon of baking soda to 1 teaspoon of vinegar. Now we have to add this soda and vinegar mixture to our cake batter. Mix it well. Now we have to divide this cake batter equally into two 6-inch round baking tins. Tap the tins twice on your bench before putting it in the oven. Now we have to put these tins in a preheated oven at 180 degrees and bake them for around 25 to 30 minutes. Now that our cake batter is in the oven, let's move on and make our sugar syrup. For this you will need 2 tablespoons of sugar and 1 fourth cup of water. Now we have to heat these two together. Once the sugar has dissolved completely, we have to let it boil for another minute and then switch off the gas. Our cakes are out of the oven. Let them cool in the tin. To demold your cakes, run a knife around and very carefully peel the parchment paper. Do the same for the second tin. We are going to let the cakes cool completely at room temperature before we start frosting them. Now that our cakes are cooling, let's get on to making our cream cheese frosting. For this you will need 100 grams of butter, that is half cup. I'm using salted butter here, but you can also use unsalted butter. But please add 1 teaspoon of salt to it. Now we have to cream this butter for around 30 to 40 seconds. To this, we are going to add 1 cup of cream cheese, that is around 225 grams. Now we have to cream these together.
we have to make sure that our butter and cheese is at room temperature before you start creaming it. To this, we are going to add 450 grams of icing sugar. I'm going to add it in parts. Always sift your icing sugar before adding. The amount of icing sugar depends on the brand of butter and cream cheese that you're using. I have used 480 grams of icing sugar. Now I'm going to add half teaspoon of lemon juice to it to cut through the sweetness. Now this has to go in the fridge for at least two hours before it can be used. Our cakes have cooled down completely and now it's time to assemble them. We are going to soak it with our cooled sugar syrup. Don't forget the sides. Now take two spoons of your frosting and spread it on the cake. Once you've got an even smooth surface, Place the other cake on top of it. Now soak this layer as well, covering the top and the sides. Now again, take two spoons of your frosting and cover the top and the sides. A thin layer of frosting on your cake is called a crumb coat. It catches all the crumbs of the cake and makes your cake neat. After doing this, we have to chill the cake in the fridge for around 15 minutes. Our cake is out of the fridge and our frosting has firmed up quite a bit. Now let's give it a second coat. Our second coat of frosting is done. We have to chill this cake again in the fridge for 10 minutes. Now it's time for the final finish. Now we are going to smoothen the sides with a bent scraper. Now, pull in the edges and smoothen the top. Now to decorate the cake, I am using white chocolate shavings. To make the shavings, the step is very simple. You just run the peeler on the white chocolate and there you have your shavings. Now it's time to get our cake out of the fridge and decorate it. Our cake has chilled completely and now it's time to decorate it. I have some frosting in a piping bag with a star tip. And now on the sides, we are going to make these wave kind decoration. Now I'm going to use some chocolate frostings to cover the sides. Now to decorate the top of our cake, I have some strawberries here. Now put some chocolate shavings around the strawberries. Our soft and creamy red velvet cake is ready. Do try it this Valentine's Day and let us know your feedback. Until next time, bye-bye. Hi guys, welcome to Rajshree Food. This is the Bombay chef Varun Namdar. 
and this Valentine, I bring a very special recipe, very close to my heart, strawberry tiramisu. And guess what? I'm making this for someone very special and she's joining me at the end of the video. So since it's a strawberry tiramisu, the first thing that I'm going to make is a strawberry jam. So let's begin with the process of the jam. So I'm taking some strawberries and in goes some sugar. I'll put the flame on, medium heat, let the sugar lightly melt, let the strawberries just poach in the sugar syrup. So now this has been poaching in the sugar syrup for some 10-12 minutes. Now is the time to move this soft strawberry jam into the bowl again. Now is the time, the strawberry jam goes in the refrigerator. We'll come back and cream the cheese. The next step is to start whipping the cream and the cheese. So I'm taking this in a larger bowl. Now that this cream is almost doubled in volume and it has also become light and frothy, is the time to stop churning this and start creaming the cheese along with sugar. Now this cheese is mascarpone cheese. So it goes in some sugar, little at a time. Now that the cream cheese and the cream both have been nicely churned, time is now to start mixing the two. So I'm taking the cream back again and goes in the mascarpone cheese along with the sugar and with very light hands, just start mixing the two mixtures together. Now that all the components of this strawberry tiramisu are ready, let's now start building it in this cute little mug. So let's begin with the first step that is taking the jam and this goes straight in the mug. The next that goes in are these cute little biscuits which are also called saviardis. So these I am dipping in fresh orange juice. Goes in the first biscuit and make sure it covers the entire strawberry layer. Now next goes in the whipped cream and cheese. I'm taking a large scoop of this and that goes right on top of the cookies. Next that goes in is another generous scoop of the same strawberry jam. So that goes in here. With the help of a spoon, we'll just make sure it forms an even layer. Now in similar fashion, you just keep building the layers, making sure the topmost layer is always the cream because that's the fun where the garnishing begins. Well, if you don't get these cookies in a store nearby, don't worry. Take a regular white chocolate sponge, dip it in the same syrup, do the same thing absolutely in the same manner. Now I'm going to level the topmost layer of the cream cheese and I will make sure it looks nice and even without messing the mug. Now this goes in the refrigerator for half an hour to an hour it has to be nicely chilled. Make sure and then I show you how to garnish it. So now that the tiramisu has set so perfectly well, it has become nice and set. Now is the time to start garnishing. So the first thing is a traditional garnish which is cocoa powder. The next thing that goes in some beautiful strawberries which I've just roughly cut. So I'm just placing them like so. so. Next goes in some oranges. And then I have in some microgreens. I am using kale here, but nevertheless, you can use some mint or you can use some coriander or parsley. Now, if you're actually wondering why this spot has been here since the beginning of the video, actually, these are edible flowers and I would be garnishing the tiramisu with these flowers. And now the tiramisu is ready. So this version of the strawberry tiramisu has been specially made for my beloved wife. And here she is. Thanks for inviting me. Absolute pleasure that you're and here. And more importantly, thanks for making this for me. Always a pleasure. Uh, why don't you try it? Sure. Come. You 
has tried. Like it? Let me try. Hmm. Beautiful. Anyway, I'm most definite you have enjoyed watching this video. And moreover, wait to watch what mommy share gets next to your kitchen. <laughs>
So this is how you can rustle up an instant cheesecake. And for all of you out there, happy Valentine's Day. Hello and welcome to Divine Taste with Anushruti. Today, I'm going to arm you with a dessert recipe that is easy, quick and looks gorgeous. Strawberry yogurt parfait is a beautiful looking dessert that is a breeze to make and also scores high on the taste factor. So let's get started. I have over here about 500 grams, which is a pound of strawberries that have been washed and dried. And now I'm going to hull these strawberries, which means that I'm going to remove the outer green covering like this. Strawberries are packed with antioxidants, vitamin C and a whole lot of other nutrients and they are a great snack all by themselves when they are in season. And now I'm going to cut these strawberries into small pieces. Now I'm done with the strawberries and now on to the next step. I'm going to put in a tablespoon of sugar into the strawberries. Toss it around a bit. And allow it to rest for a while. If you find that your strawberries are very sour, feel free to add some more sugar. This is about 100 grams of digestive biscuits. You could also use butter cookies. Place these cookies in this bag over here. And then I'm going to seal this bag like this. And now I'm going to crush this into a powder with the help of my rolling pin. I'm looking for a coarse and grainy texture and not a fine powder. And now I'm going to put the biscuit powder into this bowl. I'm going to put in two tablespoons of melted butter, a tablespoon of raw sugar, you could use any granulated sugar as well, and then I'm going to mix this all together until the crumbs resemble coarse bread crumbs. I have over here about 500 grams of hung yogurt or dahi and what I've done is I've taken about 800 grams of regular yogurt and put it in a cheesecloth over a strainer with a bowl underneath to collect the excess water. And after the water was drained for about 3-4 to four hours, I was left with 500 grams of this yogurt. And now I'm going to put this yogurt into my mixing bowl. And into this, I'm going to put in 200 ml, about 3 fourths of a cup of low-fat cream. 2 third cup, 90 grams of powdered sugar. And then I'm going to mix this all together until it is smooth and creamy. You can always do this with a whisk or a hand beater, but I'm using my stand mixer today. Now for a more pronounced strawberry flavor, I'm going to put in two tablespoons of strawberry preserve. You can also use strawberry jam if you have some on hand. And next I'm going to grate some nutmeg. Teaspoon of vanilla extract. And now I'm going to beat all this together until all the ingredients are well incorporated into the yogurt. And now is the time for the most exciting part. All the individual components required to make this dessert are ready and now let's put all of them together. The first layer is going to be the yogurt layer and I'm going to spoon some yogurt into this glass over here. And the next layer is going to be the crunchy biscuit layer. Just going to sprinkle this over the yogurt. The third layer is going to be the strawberry.
and now I'm going to top up the glass with the remaining layers. I'm going to sprinkle these pistachios over the strawberries and it looks lovely. Parfait in French means perfect and this dessert is truly perfection in a glass. So if you liked watching me make this dessert, do not forget to subscribe to Rajshree Food.